Good afternoon, everyone. Can you believe it is Friday already? Or we call it Fry Yay! So come on in. We have some, a bunch of questions. Let's just say a lot of questions. So we want to get busy on this and get on it right away. And I want to get y'all in here. Let's do it keeps telling me I can watch this on a bigger screen if I want to. If I saw my face on a bigger screen, I might scream, scream, scream. <laughs> oh my goodness. How is everyone today? Come on in. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Here we go. Here comes my ladies. You know, we can't always rely on Facebook to give you the notification, but what you can rely on that I have found to be extraordinarily helpful is phone um, setting your alarms on your phone. I have to tell you, I am I'm learning some real game changer things by just really utilizing this and making piggybacking things. It's amazing. Hello, Catherine and Veronica. And there's our girl, Jenny. Give a shout out to Jenny, our community manager. Always here, ever faithful. We love our Jenny. Who else is here? My girlfriend, Vanessa. It's Q&A day, and Sarah, come on in, y'all. And here come the little thummy, thummy, thummies up, and of course the hearts. You see what I'm wearing today? Love. Hello, Hermine and Jane. Gosh, you guys are great. I'm so glad to see you all. Catherine, Denise, <laughs> I'm calling you out. It's like romper room. The only thing missing is my thingy. <laughs> yup. Good morning to you, Susan and Penny. Look at all my ladies, beautiful ladies in the house. Joanne. Glad to see everyone so much, really. Um, you know, it's the days are just kind of weird right now, aren't they? I mean, I, I keep saying, wow, how do I even know that it, what day it is? You know, whatever. But, you know, the fact is my life has not changed probably as radically as a lot of yours, yours have, and um, I like to keep things focused on positive things, things that we can do for ourselves, ways that we can improve without having to turn our worlds upside down, being a lot more gentler on ourselves, having a big, massive amount of grace. <laughs> Catherine, yes, it is Groundhog's Day in some sense. It sure, it certainly is. But you know, here, here's the thing. Here's the place that we're in right now, and. Um, it's, it's making choices, you know, daily. Is the, am I going to choose to be a blessing and, and to bless? Or am I going to ch make a choice to whine and complain and, you know, shrink my brain, essentially, right? You've heard me talk about this. And, you know, I'm just going to stay here in the positive zone and I'm going to keep on um, saying all the good things that I'm, I keep saying because when I do that... I am lifted up. And if I'm sharing that with you, I hope you're walking away also lifted up. How interesting. And that's the kind of thing that we want to be spreading, right? These are the things that we want to be giving to each other. We want to give each other so much grace, so much love, so much bountiful everything, abundantness, overflowing, I don't like the other stuff. The other stuff just doesn't work for me. There is a lot of negativity. And I'm going to tell you what, one of my favorite things is shutting off that stupid squawk box. I've had enough of the television. Last night, Mark had a game with Robert. They played chess for three hours, Robert's Marla's husband. And they did it, you know, they did it with their phones texting each other and they have a numeric algebraic system that they use to do it. And it's just, it's hilarious. So they had a three hour game. And, you know, since we weren't sitting on the going Netflix crazy last night, we're in the middle of watching Parks and Rec, by the way. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. If you loved The Office, you'll like Parks and Rec. So anyway, we, we were, um, we, so we didn't watch anything. And I got work, some work done that I was working on, some, some things that have been way on the back burner. And I also had a, just a really nice time of listening to the quiet. There is something to be said to listening to the quiet. That is a blessing. So that was my night last night. 
So I say to this, <laughs> miracles come in moments, so be ready and willing. Miracles like the TV's off. This is a Wayne Dyer quote and one of my favorite Wayne Dyer quotes because, you know, Wayne just, he gets it. He gets down to just the smallest of things because it's the smallest of things that move the needle, always. You lose weight by the ounce. You just make one little tiny change in the GPS and you end up in a completely different place. It's amazing. If we start to embrace the little things and stop worrying so much about the great big things, we're going to see miracles happen in our lives in the moment for the day, just for today, because that's what we've got just today. So are you sharing these videos, by the way? And did anybody make my Coco Van from last night? I'm telling you, that stuff was off the hook. We had it last night for dinner and I made enough so that we've got leftovers. I I am telling you, I am a, the queen of leftovers. It's so funny because, you know, how people have their different attitudes about it. Mark's like, well, isn't that just a lot of food for f two people? And I'm like, leftovers, dude. Leftovers. <laughs> Can you just work with me on the leftovers? I love me some leftovers. <laughs> All righty. Anyway, um, we have we have supplements flying out the door, guys. So if you're interested in supplements, take care of of it okay get your supplements ordered we got lots of stuff on order we're working really hard so is our supplier it's it's crazy town right now this is the law of the jungle that's all there is this is the law of the jungle right now um, Mary is asking did I cook that last piece of chicken you bet as soon as that thing went off I just pulled out another um, skillet and, and did it so threw it all in together simmered it on the stovetop it was absolutely the bomb.com if you don't know what I'm talking about, I do cooking lessons at 4 p.m. every single day of the week. My daughter Caroline helps out from Inherited Salt as well. She's InheritedSalt.com and, you know, we might have some other surprises coming. We might have some other surprises coming. But anyway, um, I made this cocoa van recipe last night that is absolutely killer. Easy to make, absolutely delicious, on point. I suggest that you make extra so that you have leftovers just exactly like I did because I have a feeling that it's going to be even better. We're going to save it for tomorrow and have it for dinner tomorrow. Just, you know, that's it and have another day of aging in the refrigerator. I'm big on that kind of stuff. That beef stew always tastes better that way too, right? Anyway, I have no idea what I'm cooking today, but I know that some kind of a little something from heaven will come down and I will do it. She, Caroline does. She has a link for those aprons on her site. Yep. And I do cook good and easy meals because my whole philosophy is that everybody needs to be able to climb into the kitchen, open up the refrigerator, open up the pantry and go this, 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 and make something, right? Yes. And this is a cookbook author telling you this. This is somebody who, who does the menu, menu um, plans and all of that. But I also use recipes but I also want to be able to have the creativity to just do something and when you understand the different you know how to do things and you understand that cooking really is just chemistry um, you know a little bit of high heat and I explain those things as I go and it is amazing what happens because it then it becomes really fun right yes beauty support's probably coming at the end of the month I hope well we're here at the end of the month aren't we but just absolutely check it out. Share this, share my cooking videos too. We have lots of people that we can touch and help um, as we're going through this. This is our community, you know? We have an amazing community. You know what I always say, look up, look out, and look in. This is how we become the very best versions of who we are right now. It's also how we bring in like-minded souls who are also struggling with whatever it is that they're struggling with. And need a community to help support and encourage. I mean, that's the way it should be, right? That is absolutely the way it should be. We have the sprint coming up, which I believe is what, May 8th? Is that when we started? May, May 4th? Anyway, we have a sprint coming up. It's May 4th, I believe. You want to join it. It's free. Just go to Save Me Dinner Support, click on the link, and there you go. Ba-doom! It's right there. It's free. And we do it in community, and I'll tell you more about it later. I have a lot of things to get to, though, right here. Um, don't forget, ships free is the code if you're going to buy supplements, but you have to put in it 
L-glutamine. If you put L-glutamine in your cart, you'll get the L-glutamine. It's an amino acid, that's what it is, but it also is extraordinarily effective for knocking out any kind of craving. I don't care if you're craving carbs or craving heroin. Sincerely, I learned this from a psychiatrist who specializes in addicts and uses it on her patients. Here's how she does it. I'm gonna show you because I keep this on my desk. I have addiction problems too, not gonna lie. My name's Leanne, I'm a food addict. Hello. You put it, wet your finger clean, put it on your teeth and gums. I do this every day on your tongue and boom, it kills that, cuts it off at the knees. Done, 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 done. It also helps you heal your gut. And believe me, how important healing your gut is right now. 70% of your immune system is in your gut. You need to have a good, healthy gut. Absolutely critical, 100% critical. We have limited amounts of L-glutamine. You guys have been ordering it off the hook. Grab it, grab it, grab it, and put it in your cart, free shipping. And anything else that you put in your cart, you get free shipping. Anything else. Ships free is your promo code. Just make sure you use that. Also, where else are we? Oh my goodness, I've got all this weird stuff here. Q&A is on Friday, which is today. So if you have a question for next Friday, I will not answer it today, go ahead and send it into support at savingdinner.com and in the subject line, question for Leanne on Friday and I'll take care of that. We also, if you are going to order $200 worth of goodies, which I suggest you do, get a big order in, put L-glutamine in, it's free shipping. You'll also get this lovely mug. It's a mindful mug and it teaches you how to be a mindful eater. It's a fabulous thing. You will love it. Vanilla Perfect Paleo Protein is in the shop. Grab it. Again, everything is going fast. Supplements, nobody can keep supplements in, in supply right now because they just are flying out the door. I want you to have them. Get them now. Savingdinner.com. You'll see up in the corner there on the right, that's where our supplement store is. And I highly suggest that you go get it. Our first question <laughs> is for our, from our friend Lucy. I just read an article on how to stimulate the vagal system. Exercise, fish oil, probiotics, intermittent fasting, laughing, social enjoyment, and deep breathing are all on your list. Do I need to add gargling, singing, humming, perhaps acupuncture and massage? How important is a stimulated vagus nerve? Or did I read about baloney? Your opinion. Note that food foot re reflexology was mentioned as a route to lower blood pressure. Nonsense? No, I believe in an integrative approach always. Um, if there's so many different ways to lower blood pressure. It really annoys me that, that doctors, the first thing that they look at is, here's a pill for the rest of your life. When sometimes it's a mineral deficiency, sometimes it's a matter of hydration, sometimes it's none of the above. I would always say, you know, just always try it and um, talk to your doctor about doing some alternative things first. Always work with a doctor, but you know, again, you don't necessarily, sometimes this is just the easy way to get to, to take care of something, a problem for the doctor, and maybe you want to go a different route. I've had, I know people who personally who've done that. It is a, 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 a matter though of always working with your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I am not a doctor. I'm a nutritionist, but I have seen nutritional deficiencies get corrected and blood pressure get corrected as well without the use of pills. However, again, back to working with your doctor. That's number one. Um, as far as the vagal system, you know, the whole, you, the vagus nerve, the, the vagal nerve is throughout your body and it affects your everything, your liver, your kidneys, your stomach, your, your, your gut, everything is attached to it and stimulating it helps with anxiety. It helps to um, ease, ease uh, your cortisol a little bit. It also keeps you in a place of calmness and works a little bit with depression as well. And it's just, it's part of the feel good system, I would say. And it's part of understanding and knowing your body. So I would say to, to you on that, that the, the biggest, my biggest um, recommended, um, my biggest recommendation for that is to do, you don't have to do all of the things, but do some of them. Laughing, you know, I mean, all the things that we talked, that we talked about and all the things that were on your list, I added those in simply because those are things that are 
easy for us to do because they're usually a part of their lives. I don't know how many of you gargle, but I don't gargle. You know, I'll gargle if I have a sore throat or whatever, but you don't need to gargle. I don't hum, <laughs> but I might sing every once in a while. Anything that you want to do is always going to be, you know, on that list is fine. You can add it to the list if you want to. But again, I'm all about not piling on. You know, we have enough on our plates, most of us. And uh, whatever works for you, works for you. So just make sure you do that. You have another question, Lucy, and it says, would you recommend that penny pinchers eat sauerkraut often for the probiotic effect? I read an article by Josh Axe, and if he's correct, sauerkraut is a miracle food. He even had a paragraph on the vagus nerve and sauerkraut, of course. Fermented food is amazing. Fermented food does all of the things. Fermented food is a probiotic and a prebiotic, and it's also a great, sense, a great um, fiber source. I sincerely love sauerkraut as opposed to yogurts and even kefir. Kefir water I prefer than other kefirs because dairy can still be a problem because casein is still um, there even though the lactose is broken down. But I would strongly suggest that you go with a good sauerkraut. Make sure that it has live cultures in it and um, eat it up. You know, we have bratwurst. We get a really nice bratwurst that we, I think Costco or someplace, but it's, you know, uncured, kind of a good, delicious bratwurst and sauerkraut. And what I will do is I will saute up a bunch of onions and I'll warm up the sauerkraut. We'll put the, the brats on top of it with a good mustard. Oh my gosh, it's delicious and so good for you. And every time I eat it, I always think about all of my all the little friends in my tummy and my gut just saying thank you <laughs> because sincerely you know we're all we fight a war in our guts we do this is why it's so important to heal up all the little leakiness that we have and we all have it because stress adds to it once again more you know uh, shout outs to the to your friends um, the vagal nerve to keep that health, happy and healthy but you know, it's just it's a, it's an incredible thing to be able to to get your gut in in good working order. Your digestion changes, your immune system is bumped. Um, this is important, and probiotics are an important part. We have two probiotics in our shop. I believe we still have a few in there. Where we've got, I told you, we've got an order that's bigger than this house <laughs> coming in. We're just you know holding our breath and and waiting for our supplier to to get it. We're just waiting on confirmations when everything's going to be done. But, you know, grab what's there. Those probiotics are excellent. Both of them are. I strongly recommend them. Um, the other thing is making sure that you are, you know, that the quality of the probiotic foods that you buy are there. Veronica's asking, where do you get a good sauerkraut? You're usually going to find it in the refrigerated section because, you know, you want live cultures and live cultures require conditions to keep them alive. So take a look at that. I know we got a raw one that was really good. Um, we also found another one that was in uh, a bag and also, what, what's it called? Bubby's has a good one. It's in the refrigerated section and it's in a jar. So those are, those are some good ones that I would recommend. And sauerkraut's just absolutely phenomenal for you. Kathy has asked, how do you zest a lemon? Well, this is a good question because what you have to do on the lemon, Kathy, is make sure that you have a, um, make sure that you're not getting the pith. You just want the yellow part on the, on the outside of it. Wash your lemon really well first, dry it, and then take the, uh, take a grater or even better would be a, a, a rasp, you know, very thin and grate it okay and grate it till you get to the white and then stop that is the zest and it's full of all kinds of nutrients and vitamin c and and curatin and all kinds of stuff um go ahead and grab that use it up anything that you don't use put in the freezer and you can use it for another uh, you can use it for another use it's fantastic and um, that's how you do it just make sure you don't get the white pith in there because that's kind of bitter it has its own nutrient values and all of that. Uh oh, how come this isn't working? There we go. Um, so Kathy's also asking, how much water do you use to steam the vegetables and for how long? Well, one, 
it depends on how many vegetables I have. But what I do is I put it in the bottom of a pot and I put up to an inch, about an inch, inch and a half. Then I'll put the steamer grate in there. You can do it with the steamer. That really works. Um, and then put the vegetables in and then you do it until they are fork tender. It depends. If you put zucchini in there, by the, you know, for example, it, that's going to be done in just like a few minutes. If broccoli will take longer. So do that and make sure that you're, you're, um, uh, that, that will really help. Don is asking if the L, if L glutamine in the morning will interfere with your thyroid medication. So take your thyroid medication all by itself an hour before, you know, whatever. I wake up in the morning, like around 5 a.m. I need to go use the bathroom. I have my thyroid out and ready to go at that point. I take it then. And then I get back into bed. And then I will take all my other things. You know, I take um, L-glutamine. I also take SAME first thing in the morning. You can take SAME and your thyroid at the same time if you want to, um, or at least my brand of thyroid, which is, I have the WP thyroid. And that one works. Um, that's fine to take with SAME. I don't know about any other brand though. That this is the word that I got from my doctor. My doctor gave me the go ahead to do that. That's number one. Uh, um, L-glutamine needs to come later, but you know, again, get you, get to in the habit of taking very first thing, you know, early, early in the morning of doing that and giving yourself a rest an hour before you're doing anything else. They say a half an hour. I go for a full hour, you know, who cares, right? And then you should, you're not going to have any in- interference. That's what I would do. Um, so that's what you would do for the why. Again, you know, it's it's all a matter of, gosh, why can't this, what is going on with this thing? I can't close it. There we are. Um, it, it's all a matter of each individual, not all vegetables steam at the same rate. So tender vegetables, not very long, a couple of minutes. Um, the heartier things, like cauliflower and and broccoli are going to take a little bit longer. I just take a fork and I put a fork in it. You want it tender, but you don't want it too hard. The other thing that I do is I will also steam up broccoli if I'm going to use it in a um, stir fry and I'll let it, you know, take it off. It's, It's more like a blanch, but I do it with steaming and I will take it before it's, it's steamed all the way through. But I, you know, have you ever been to a Chinese restaurant and, and you're eating like broccoli and beef or whatever, and it's all like the broccoli is still raw. It's because they haven't steamed it ahead of time. I mean, broccoli just requires a whole lot more cooking. It's the only thing that ever drives me crazy about those things. Plus all the sugar that they put in Chinese food, which is sad. Um, this is from Jane. I've read that when heated olive oil becomes a becomes a trans fat. But I've also read the opposite, that as long as it's not heated to the smoke point, it's okay for sauteing. In the past couple of years, I've only used ghee or coconut oil, but I miss the flavor of olive oil. What's your opinion? Okay, so uh, good question. Here's the thing you need to understand. The first pressing of olive oil is called extra virgin olive oil. The second pressing is virgin olive oil. The third pressing is olive oil. And that's because that's, that's just how it works. The more the pre- it's pressed, the more hardy the olive oil is, and you can get it up to about 400 degrees. Save your extra virgin olive oil for the good stuff, the expensive stuff, the stuff we sell, which is the fresh pressed olive oil. Unbelievable. Do not saute in that. But a lesser quality olive oil, by all means, do it. 350 to about 400 degrees is what you'll get with the just the regular olive oil and 350 for a virgin olive oil. I would even say 325 for a, a really good, excellent virgin, extra virgin olive oil. So that said, it doesn't saute really well, right? You need high heat for sauteing. High heat means you're going to probably get up to about 400 degrees. So the other thing you can do is, yes, saute, you can use an avocado oil, um, which has a 425 degree smoke point. Again, a good quality one. And then you could even drizzle with a little extra olive oil, virgin olive oil, um, once it comes out. So you can use it on occasion, but watch your smoke point. If it starts to smoke, (laughs) down it goes. You don't want that ever. Okay, I'm closing. Close it. Oh my goodness. Hello. 
I can't get these cells to open up. There it is. Oh my goodness. All right. This is Susan. And she said, I'm loving your programs. Will you please show us what to do with cod filet besides fish and chips? I'm gluten-free due to celiac. Thank you. I can. You know, and I, I will also mention that one of the things that we do, and you know, you're talking about dinner answers, I'm assuming, Susan. Dinner answers is our everything program. It's it's our menu planning program. It's our proprietary thing that we do to, to help feed people so they know what's for dinner. It's a program, not a bunch of recipes. It is a program and it helps to understand that when you, however it is that you eat is however we have the program for you. That helps, right? So when we use fish, we say a firm white fish, frozen or fresh. In other words, cod, whatever it is that you have available, halibut, whatever it is that is available, some kind of a bass, trout, whatever. Fish is fish is fish and can be, and, and I know somebody, some gourmet chef around here is going to freak out that I said that. But honestly, for our purposes, it's true. You can use cod for a lot of things, like you, for any fish recipe. Any fish recipe that we have on our database is interchangeable. And we've tried this and, sh and shifted around with it. I want you to have the flexibility to not have to say, oh my gosh, I don't have, you know, fill in the blank fish. I need to go out and go shopping. I don't have flounder. I don't have tilapia. I don't have, well, tilapia I wouldn't recommend, but we do have some tilapia recipes. But, you know, in later, last few years, they've shown how, you know, the dirty conditions it's been raised in, unfortunately. But the point is, white fish is white fish is white fish is white fish. Use whatever you want. Do it skillet. Do it on a grill. You can even do it on a grill. Even cod, even flounder, as thin as they are. Here's how you do it. You use a grate. You use a special grate. Just put it on there with a bunch of vegetables. Take it out. You can do them in foil packets. Anything. Anything goes. Fish is fantastic. I love fish. We, we eat fish at least once or twice a week, usually twice a week around here. And um, it's a great, easy, fast option. So if you're part of the Dinner Answers program, all you have to do is, is search the database. The database has everything. We have thousands of of recipes. And, you know, if you want to become a Dinner Answers subscriber, by the way, and, and a member, it's seven bucks a month. We have, pan, we're calling it pandemic pricing, but this is how you support Dinner Answers because we need your support. And this is how we in turn support you getting families, your family back to the dinner table. It is a delicious, um, but cod is a delicious, easy fish. You can do, um, I have a seafood chowder that's just off the hook. And maybe I'll show you how to do that. Maybe that's going to be one of mine. Oh, good, Susan. I'm so glad you. I'm so glad that helped you. I'm glad you're here. All right. So what do we have here? This is Carla. When do you plan to do the supplements class, or do you still plan to do it? Well, here's what I am looking for. <laughs> um. I'm looking for a consistency with our supplier right now. I'm looking for a consistent, they're running out of raw materials. You know, all of them are, all of them are running out of raw materials. And fortunately our supplier just got a ton of it in. We are so blessed is what I have to say about that. But of course they're stretched beyond capacity. They are doing, they're running 24 seven with skeletal crews, as you can well imagine, all supplement suppliers and manufacturers are doing that. Some of them are really jacking up their prices. We've actually lowered ours. Go take a look. We've got some really good prices in there. And I am going to do an entire supplements class once the availability is there and once I know that I can, I can say, this is what I recommend. This is where I want you to go for that. This is what we have. But right now is not the time. I will do it though. You just, I promise. Just hang on. It's coming, but it's going to be post-pandemic. All right. There you go. Supply and demand. You know, we have to have that supply. Okay. I'm just waiting for my computer to do what it's supposed to do. There it is. And are you still planning to do the book club? You know, I, funny that you should ask me about that, Carla. Man, you have, you just keep everything in your head here. I am anxious to do the book club. I want to do the book club. So 
it's just a matter of figuring out how and when and how the whole thing would be put together. So um, it's that also is probably going to be a post-pandemic thing. Or maybe I should start it now. I don't know. I, I would just love to do it. It's just it's super easy to do. All I have to do is give you a link. You guys go buy the book or, you know, get, a, get it on your Kindle or whatever, and we go for it. But um, right now, my daughter Caroline is starting a cookbook club. You can find it on inheritedsalt.com and check it out. She's, I know she's doing that. She's doing uh, fat acid, what, fat, salt, fat, acid, heat, whatever. The Samin book, really good book on, I make my Nutra coaches uh, read that book. I think it's, it's must, must have reading. It's a, she explains it like nothing else. This one is from Patricia Moore, and she said, can you add L-glutamine, hot milk mix, PPP, perfect paleo protein, to a hot beverages? Fiber mender, anything that you cannot. Um, I wouldn't do that, no. And the reason that I wouldn't, okay, so L PPP, by the way, is our perfect paleo protein, which I don't, it's right there. It's the tall thingy right there. Right, I'll see it on my shelf. Perfect Paleo Protein is fabulous. Collagen is what it is. And we have a, a very clean version of this. And um, I love it. The problem with Perfect Paleo Protein is if you have too hot of a, be a beverage, it would clunk up like this. And it's just, it's not meant to do that. So my suggestion is to do it with a kind of a warm beverage, not a hot beverage. It works fine. Let, let the coffee cool a little bit and put it in a blender it's delicious. I love it with vanilla, perfect paleo protein. It's fantastic. But don't, uh, you know, all of this stuff to me would be pretty disgusting um, with the exception of hot milk mix and is really good in hot water. Even with tea, I've done that before. And I would have never thought to do that except Marla did it and said, oh, it's so delicious. <laughs> yep. Definitely, uh, it's, it does work. So those are the ways that you can do it. What happens is, see, here's the thing. When you're doing a smoothie, smoothies have a tendency to be extraordinarily forgiving because you're adding all kinds of stuff to them, especially if you're doing our Target Trifecta smoothie. It has like spinach in it, just used veggies. It's got all the stuff in it. And with all of that in the flavor of the vanilla or the, even the chocolate perfect paleo protein, it, it has, it's super forgiving with all the things that you're throwing in. But if you do it with just hot water, if you added hot water and L-glutamine and all of that stuff, ew. Fiber mender, especially now. I would add fiber mender. You can just add it into a glass of cold water if you want. It's flavorless. But it, it could clump up, but who cares? You could, but I, I like the best way to do it, of course, in my opinion, is to stick it in a blender and do it with the target trifecta. Um, but yeah, I mean, any way that you can take it is a good thing. But again, I, I'm not guaranteeing what this is going to taste like. It could be yucky. All right. This is my girl, Hermine. Love my Hermine. She's here. Say hi to Hermine, everybody. She's from Germany. She said, I think I had a ha aha moment today when Leanne talked about disappointment. For me, it's a lot about being disappointed in myself. For example, I can't stick to the routines or don't do the things that seem to be important and instead get caught up in minor details. Maybe that is also the reason I don't want to examine my life too closely because I have to face the disappointment of myself. Could you maybe give me some tips on how to take steps to face the disappointment in oneself? Well, Termaine, you sweet love. <laughs> I just adore you. I think you are such a sweet, sweet woman. Um, Hermine's one of my coaching clients, so I can say that knowing her. Here's the thing. We're all disappointed in ourselves, honey. We are. We all say we're going to do something and then we don't do it. We all make these great grandiose plans and then we fall through. We're all so extraordinarily human and so extraordinarily fallible. And right now, we're under a lot, you know, we're under a lot. And I'm not even going to say the P word or the V word or anything like that right now. I just want you to have such abundant grace with yourself. Have abundant grace with yourself. You need this. I need it. We all need it. Grace is going to see us through. Grace is going to give us the, the extra love that we need from ourselves. 
And grace at the end of the day is is our saving grace. It is our lifeline to ourselves. The thing that I keep saying to you is just don't quit on yourself. Don't say it's too late or I can't do it or whatever. Because you said this, I can't stick to the routines. When you say I can't, your brain says, okay, deal. So let's start flipping just some of the statements. I would start strongly suggest with creating a routine just make a routine of what you're already doing that is working and then piggyback one thing on it. Piggyback one thing for a week, just one thing. We have a tendency to want to flip all the switches, right? But honestly, you only need to flip the switch for the light you're in, <laughs> for the room you're in, right? You only need to flip the light switch for the room you're in. That's it. We just need to light up one room at a time. We don't have to have the whole house lit up. I mean, that's wasteful, number one. And number two, you're not in that room at that time. So where is it? Where's the tender spot? Where's the place where you don't feel good about it? Take a look at that one thing. Take a look at that one thing and say, you know, it would be better if I did this. Just imagine what this would look like if I had this in place. This one thing. The one thing. And if we can focus on just one thing, then, then we get through it. Then we start feeling good about that. And then later on, we can add, the, add another thing. And I'm going to give you an example of something and because this is what we all do. You know how I harp on you about water and hydration and all that? I've done a class on water and hydration and, all, and electrolytes and all of that. But it gets super easy to get sucked into forgetting about it, you know, and then realizing at the end of the day, oh my gosh, I didn't drink my water. So I found myself then just power downing all this water at night and it made me feel terrible. And I'd wake up in the morning kind of bloated and I'd wake up three or four times at night to go to the bathroom because all the water was being drunk at the end of the day, which is not what you want to do, but you do want to hydrate. When you are maximally hydrated, you feel better. Your face looks better. You get rid of the bloating. There's three million things that happen that are just so great. So you develop something, some kind of a cue that's going to help you so that you do the water. You fill up your water bottles at night and put them in the refrigerator, all ready to go. You set your alarm on your phone so it's all ready to go. And that's exactly what I did. Because it's easy to slip out of your, of your good habits just as it is easy to slip into the old habits. We all do it. And that's why I'm saying grace, 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 abundant grace is so necessary and so important. Give yourself a break and unplug from the emotion. Unplug from the beating up of yourself. Unplug from all of that because it has no room in your life. It has nothing to do with who you are, with the beautiful soul that you are, Hermine. And I would also say to you that the, 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 the way to take steps is to do the things that you know that you can do. Absolutely the easiest possible things, the teeny tiniest things. There's a book called um, Tiny Habits by... Oh man, what is his name? It's over here somewhere. Uh, Boggs, I believe is his name. Professor Boggs, he's a Harvard teacher. And he, um, I've met him. He's a very nice man, lovely man. And it's, it's just making the tiniest changes. The tiniest changes that just change the whole trajectory. You don't have to do a whole workout, but do five. Off a deal. You know what? I'll do five minutes. I'll do five minutes. I do this with myself because sometimes I want to talk myself out of doing the four minute workout in the morning. And I'll say to myself, you know what? Here's the deal. I know I don't want to do that. I know I just want to sit down and have that coffee, but I'll just do one round of the four minute workout. And after I've done that first round, guess what happens? I do the next two that I'm supposed to do for my four minute workout. And it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal to do that. Make deals with yourself with little things that you know that you already can do. If it's like leaving your kitchen a mess at night, just say, you know what? 
I'm just going to go and rinse the dishes. I'm just going to do this one little thing to and stack the dishes. I don't even have to wash them. I'm just going to stack them and get get them ready to go later. And that will probably make you say, you know what, I'm just going to wipe down the counters and I'm going to run some hot soapy water. I'm just going to do them. Because that's what happens. Just that one little thing. We get wrapped up in thinking we need to have these big colossal changes. And what we need to do is one small tiny thing. Because one small tiny thing done is way better than these great big huge plans. Yes, Marlo does say we can do anything for 15 minutes and you can do anything for two minutes too, right? It does sound like Marla's fly lady baby steps. I mean, I was a fly baby back in 2000, 2000, right? But here's what you need to know. It's what Marla's, the whole, the whole baby step thing is based on psych, psychological, you know, wiring. When we start to do one thing, we can start to do the next. And when we start to accomplish just the smallest of things, we're motivated to keep going. And that's the whole thing. And you've heard me say this before, that you don't get motivated by sitting around and waiting for it. It's not like you can just sit on the couch and go, okay, motivation here, come on to me. I I need that motivation. It doesn't happen that way. Motivation happens when you take the first step. It's like Neil Armstrong, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It's the same thing for you. One small, tiny do this habit is a giant leap for the rest of your life. We can do this little by little by littleness. So do me a favor, okay? And just send me this, write out what your morning ritual is and your evening ritual. And next to that, I want you to put a check mark next to the things that you do on a regular basis. And if you're not doing them on a regular basis, I want you to ask yourself the question, why? Is it too hard? Is it too complicated? Is it too much? Are you sta- you know, falling back into the whole perfectionism trap? Or are you thinking that you're, just, you're not worthy of having what it is that you want? I don't know. We all have disappointments and we all disappoint ourselves. On the regular, we do. There's very few people that I know that aren't in this place of, and I call it the cha-cha because we go two steps forward and then we'll take it three steps back. But as long as you're not quitting on yourself, as long as you bring it back to center and start with, you know, some really good habits, do a meditative practice in the morning, 15 minutes. You can find something on YouTube to just listen to. Do something that will start you into the place of being centered. And understand that we can start over. We have been given, remember creating me a clean heart and a clean slate? That was a few days ago. We all need it. We need to be, we need to have everything. Uh, we, we need to be able to go, you know what? Clean, clear the slate. Let's start over. Get a fresh piece of paper out and start there. What is one thing that I know that I can do? And if you can connect for three days, but still have a hard time, if you know what I mean. I need your help, Martha. I can help you. Okay, so here's what you want to do. Um, what you need to look at right now, today. Whoa, where did everybody go? You lost me. Am I back? Mm. Thank you, internet connection. <laughs> so... Sorry, guys. I guess the internet just decided to take me out for a minute. Is every is there anybody here? I just lost everybody's comments. Am I still here? Is this thing on? Tap, tap, tap. All right. Well. Thank you, internet, for messing. I'm just going to keep going. And I'm just going to say hello, anybody who's back. Um, okay, so what you need to do for constipation, very simply, magnesium is going to be your fr- best friend. And, you know, th- you can take magnesium, <laughs> you can hear on the live, she says. Yikes. Uh, that was Jenny saying, we can hear you on the live. You can't see me though? No seeing? That's not, that's no big deal. All right, let's just go ahead and answer that question then. Um, 
<clears throat> so constipation is a thing. Magnesium helps with that. That said, I would take uh, a magnesium, about 500 milligrams of magnesium a day. I would also, um, and make sure you get a good one. We have a magnesium, um, a calcium magnesium coming that I strongly recommend. I love this particular one and the way it's made and all of that. I'll give you more details on that. Um, I also love Epsom salt baths. They really help a lot. Take a hot Epsom salt bath at night uh, before you go to bed. I would be watching what you're doing, not just with the fiber mender, but also with the fibrous foods. Um, fiber is your friend. Fiber is the thing that is going to move things out. And I just did a class on this whole thing with our Hot Milk Club and fiber and um, water go hand in hand. And it, you have to be drinking that much amount of water and you should be getting in about 20 to 30 grams of fiber a day. And that's a lot of fiber. A good idea to do is really watch what you're doing, how much fiber you're taking, and then really weigh and measure each, um, all of the water that you're drinking. That, that will really help. If you need to go there, um, you can have some Senna, which is a, a fiber lax, is a, a laxative that you can get online. You can, you know, buy it, I'm sure, from Amazon. And that helps a little bit, but be careful because too much is just way too much. Um, there's that, that's my strong recommendation. Also drinking some hot, um, like a hot, um, there's a tea called Smooth Move. <laughs> good one, right? That is really good. I used to do that. I think I took that when I was pregnant. It was either that or something else because that's the only time in my life I've ever had a constipation issue, but it really works and it's nice and gentle. Gentle is your friend. Magnesium is your friend. Hot baths help. Even massaging your belly helps. Put some oil on your belly and massage it and get it through. But if you are doing adequate fiber and if you're doing adequate water every day, things will go start to move through. But magnesium, getting things going might be your best bet would be um, some smooth move and some magnesium. I hope that helps. All right. And no, I don't want you to really load the page. I want you to go away. There it is. Okay, Sarah's got a question. She says, oh my, this is a biggie. How do I get back on track? After a lifetime of trying every diet, I started eating healthy a few years ago and lost 109 pounds. Wow. My body adjusted to thriving on what it was designed to eat. I lost all taste and desired for processed crap. I knew I'd never go back to eating healthy until I got the big C diagnosis. My oncologist told me not to even watch what I ate because chemo would make me gain weight. Oh. Mm. And what I ate had no effect. Plus, I couldn't eat salads and many other healthy foods. Needless to say, my old self emerged. I gained back about 60 pounds. I can't get back on track. I think I'm deranged. I know what I need to eat. I know that what is fuel for my body and what is processed crap. I know how much better my body runs on good fuel and how much better I feel. I know how much I have to learn about good to good food, to all that bad stuff. When I eat a fast food hamburger or other processed food, I immediately regret it. I don't like that it tastes like cardboard and I don't like how it sits in my belly like a rock. When I eat a healthy salad or other healthy foods, I think, wow, this is so good. So my question is, why do I eat that crap and how do I go get back to where I was? I don't crave it and I don't like it. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is because this is part of the human equation. All right. First of all, the big C, that is highly stressful. The other thing is we have the, the big P going on right now, right? The, with the big V and um, people freaking out and getting ready to reemerge. And this, is this the right time? And is this this? And you have the big C dealing that you're dealing with and a doctor who's saying, don't worry about it, which is underscoring all of it. And you're doing the very thing that you don't want to do. And even saying that eating well makes you feel better and that's what you want. And it actually tastes better, but you still default to fast food or whatever. So here's the thing. This is what I look at. When I'm doing something that I don't want to do, right? If I'm in the place of, of the, that same place, I ask myself the question, is this something that I really want to do? 
I also line myself up with account an accountability partner because what happens with us is that we default to easy. We default to what used to bring us comfort, even if it doesn't bring us comfort anymore. We default to what we've known. I call it the Oregon Trail in your head because this is you have been up and down that path how many times? I mean, you lost 109 pounds and even though you've already done all of that, you know the other Oregon Trail in your head is is what put what made you get to the place of having to lose 109 pounds in the first place. And that is quick, fast and easy. And listen, ladies, nobody wants to be quick, fast and easy, am I right? <laughs> So here's the thing, you need to make a, a, a pro-con list for yourself. On one side, you write the pros of what it is to eat crap. What is the pro? What are you getting out of it? Because you are getting something out of it or you wouldn't do it. You know, nobody's holding a gun to your head. Nobody's saying that you absolutely have to do this. And there's, there is no payoff here, really. Except you know what the payoff is because if there, was a, if there wasn't a payoff, you wouldn't do it. So you're doing it for a payoff. What is it? That needs to be examined. On the other side, you need to go on to the other side of the page and say what the advantages, what the pro side is of eating healthy food. It makes you feel better, what you need to do. Why, and then figure out on the other side, you know, what, what is the obstacle to eating healthy? Is it you feel like you don't have enough time, you don't have skills in the kitchen, you don't, I mean, whatever those things are, just come into the kitchen and we cook together, blah, 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 whatever. The point is that we're always in the place of having to reconnect the dots. And as long as you're not quitting on yourself, as long as you have the guts to go in and take a peek see at what's going on, you will always be able to figure out what you need to do next. And I will say, add another thing to it. Having an accountability partner is absolutely crucial. Being able to say to your accountability partner, here's what I'm, here's what I'm thinking about. Um, stop, stop me. I, I've done this with Marla a bazillion times. Mark, I remember, was sitting in front of the, the TV one time and we were watching a movie and he pulls out this massive chocolate bar that he got at, at Trader Joe's. And I thought, I, I thought, wow. You know, I thought I had this conquered. I don't have this conquered because I want some of that chocolate like right now. So the first, so I did is got on the, got on my phone and I texted Marla and I said, Mark's got chocolate. I even took a picture of the chocolate and I said, I really want some of that. And she said, no, you don't. <laughs> and we went back and forth and discussed it. And by the time, you know, we were done with our discussion, which wasn't like she came on and was like this big, um, you know, guru counselor, or whatever. She's just a friend to say, you don't want to go there, you know? And that's what friends do. They help stop us ourselves from doing the things that we don't want to do. But if we don't utilize, that's a lifeline right there, right? If we don't utilize those lifelines like that, we can't set ourselves up for, for new success. So this, you know, honestly, I could, I could do an hour on this question alone and help you set up on this. And maybe that's something that I do. I think, Sarah, aren't you in, aren't you in Hot Milk Club? I think you are. But if you are, let me know. Um, you know, this is something we can do a whole class on. It is, it is uh, you know, it's, it's always loaded, isn't it? It's a loaded thing when we fall back and do the things that we don't want to do. Why is that? Um, we're always asking ourselves this question. And the only way that I have found that is makes it that much better and that much easier for me to get out of that is to keep digging, using my journal, using my rituals, using my habits to help me to hold me into a framework of creating the life that I want. But if I fall my, find myself falling into this other place, I look for the loose ends. Why am I there? Why am I doing these things? And that helps. That really, really helps. The accountability helps as well. Like I said, you've got you to get into the accountability. But it's a proactive thing. It's also being mindful versus being mindless. And mindlessness is what drives every single car. I don't care who they are. Every single car that drives through a, a drive through is doing it on automatic pilot, out of ease of accomplishment, not being mindful about their nutrition and, and all the rest of it. It is a mindless activity. So make a decision on that. This is something that you're not going to do. 
I mean, I couldn't even tell you the last time I ate uh, fast food. I, I, I haven't, you know, I, I'm many, many years. But I, you know, I've, I've been to McDonald's before and sat, had a cup of a dollar for coffee and used their Wi-Fi. That's, I mean, that's pretty much it. But um, the smell of the place even I couldn't handle anymore, which is weird because I used to love it. I used to think it was like really great stuff. No, it's not. It's, and also remember too that all of this stuff is manipulated. It's all manipulated. This food is all manipulated. The flavors, the, the stuff that's put in there, it's all manipulated to get you back, to bring you back in. It's addictive substances. So get your L-glutamine, put it on your lips and tongue, just like I showed you here earlier, and go for it. And just start writing this stuff out. Get mindful over automatic. Automatic pilot does not serve. Maybe for toilet cleaning. That's about it. Um, um, okay, Veronica says, what do you do about your husband? The idea of cooking two meals daunts me. Um, sprit plus what he will eat. I, I don't know what sprit plus he will eat. Sprint plus what he will eat. Um, maybe you're talking about the thing. So here's the thing. I'm going to tell you right now, point blank, cooking meals for two should be a cooking one meal for two people. If you're trying to do low carb or something, you know, fine, just skip the potatoes, skip the mashed potatoes, skip the rice, skip the noodles, skip that part and give it to him. But figure out a meal plan based on what works for both of you. And what, you know, and move the needle that way. Now, when it comes to the Sprint, those Sprint meals are pretty delicious. I mean, come on, garlic lime chicken. If you're doing it as a Sprint meal, then you just do it without the carbs and give him whatever carbs he wants. He will not hate garlic lime chicken. Hand to God. He will not hate those smothered burgers with the mushrooms and the bacon in it and stuff. Nope, won't hate that. I don't know of a single man who would. So you got to sit down and figure out, you know, what your meal plans are going to be together. And then, you know, like when you say what he will eat, I have no idea what he will eat or not eat. If your husband is like, you know, hell bent on I'm, all I'm going to eat is macaroni and cheese, then make up a big casserole the size of a, a small truck and make him his macaroni and cheese and stick it in the refrigerator, whatever. And there you go. You've got it and you can st still keep going on your healthy way. My whole thing is make it work for the two of you. What you want to be able to do is just add on to his plate the one thing that you're not going to eat. And really, that's usually going to be a carbohydrate, like, you know, noodles, rice, potatoes, that kind of thing. Otherwise, sit down with him and make a plan together. It's just, I can't, without knowing specifics of how he eats, I can't really help you with that. But I also know that you can always create, I mean, if he's like, all I want is lasagna and this, that, and the other thing. How about you just take all of that lasagna, right? And uh, you make him like a massive lasagna and, and do it that way. If he's saying, oh, I won't eat that or I won't eat this or I won't touch a vegetable or whatever, um, that's sad. Um, and maybe you need to have a kind of a quest, talk to him about, well, you know, I love you and I want you to live longer than, you know, till you're 50 and vegetables are like a part of the equation. This is how we get the nutrients into the cells or whatever. But, you know, if, barring that, my high, high, high recommendation is that if you cannot get him on board and if he won't eat like any of the sprint meals at all, then make some big stuff up that he does like. A big lasagna, a big macaroni and cheese casserole or whatever the stuff it is that he likes then break it up and freeze it and just get it over with, you know, and, and just let it go. Don't let it be a thing anymore. But, um, I have found, and what I have seen where, as we do the sprint every single time that we have husbands who are climbing on board and saying, wow, like this stuff is delicious. And what these women are doing is giving their husbands the baked potato. I don't know what, but something good. That's number one. Number two, um, tomorrow is soulful Saturday. Tomorrow is soulful Saturday. So join me again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern right here. 
where we're going to be talking about some stuff that's going to feed your little soul. I don't know about you, but my cup gets empty all the time, needs refilling. So if you want to refill your cup, come on in. I'm happy to be with you and love you up. You love me up. I sure appreciate it. Peace out, guys. Have a great one. We'll see you at four.